Welcome to the fifth PIC 18F 14K50 tutorial based in the C language. We will be learning about buttons today. And in the previous tutorial, we learned how to do a button, how to make one work from scratch. And now we are going to be learning about how to do it with the MPLAB code configurator or the MCC. So this is going to have a lot of overlap from tutorial four. So if you've already watched tutorial four, you're going to get some repeated information, which is fantastic. It's always good to hear something again and uh, get it hopefully in a slightly different way to help cement it in the brain. Uh, otherwise, our approach to the program itself is going to be slightly different because we're going to be using that visual configurator versus doing everything from scratch. Okay, with that, let's start out with the first thing. And conceptually, I want to go over a brief topic that you may already be aware of, or you may have heard in the previous tutorial, and that is a weak pull-up uh, or a pull-up resistor. Now, in this system, we will have the internal weak pull-up resistor of the microcontroller on our input. And if you don't know what a resist a pull-up resistor is, all it does is it takes an input that has perhaps a floating voltage and ties it weakly to power, to VCC. And it does this so that if it's not connected to anything, it could float and you don't ever want that. So you just want to pull it up to either ground or VCC and it's typically high to VCC, um, but you don't want to tie it so hard. You don't want to directly tie it to VCC that you can't change it. So right now with what we're doing here is we're going to have the output, or excuse me, the input connected through the internal resistor that ties it to VCC. So whenever nothing is acting on it, it will read high, but then with the button, we'll short it to ground and draw immediately to ground if necessary. And that's one of those things where you want your pull-up resistor to be a large enough value that when you are tying it to ground that you're not drawing a lot of current straight from VCC through that resistor, but you also don't want it um, so big or yeah, such a large resistance that it doesn't really tie it to VCC strongly enough. Okay, so we'll see that in action here, but I just wanted to conceptually go over the concept of a weak pull-up resistor because we will be dealing with that in this circuit. So with that, we will be taking this button and we will make it so when we push the button, the light turns on, push the button, the light turns off. And if you have this set up from tutorials two or three, then it's a very quick addition of a single button. And if you're going from tutorial four, it should already be set up. But the main goal of what we're doing here is just making it so when we push that button, this LED turns on, push it again, it turns off. So very straightforward. Let's go over the schematic really briefly so that you can see exactly how it's connected. So you just aren't just hearing what I'm saying. And then we'll go over the configuration itself before going over the code we need to create, and then we'll see it in action. So as you look at the schematics diagram, you can, you can see once again that all we have is the picket four connected. We have our resistor in series with our LED connected to the same pin, RC0, and all we've added is on pin 11, which is RB6, part of port B, is a switch that is tied directly to ground. Now, if we didn't have the internal pull-up resistor, you wouldn't want that. You'd have to have a slightly different configuration, but because we do, we can tie it directly to ground. And as I mentioned, that is all we need for the schematics. It's very, very straightforward. So with that, let's jump straight into the MCC configuration. I've already created the project and changed the settings to power the circuit from the picket four. So we're just going to assume that you're already to that point. We went over that in projects or in tutorials two and three. If you don't remember how to do that, you can go check it out. Uh, otherwise, we'll just go to the point where we open up the MCC and configure it so that we can have both the input of the button and the output of the LED. Okay, so we are here and we go up and we hit the MCC button. And this seems to take a little bit of time. So it, if it doesn't seem like it's doing anything, just have patience. Maybe you have a faster computer than me and it goes better. Or if you have a worse one, it takes even longer. Who knows? But just be patient. It is working. We will select the MCC Classic as gen as before, and we still don't need any of this optional content, so we can just hit Finish, and it will generate the layout for us. All right, there we go. It finally it popped up. Okay, first things first, so I don't forget, let's change our package over to a BIP 
or if you have a different package, use that different package. And then our internal oscillator is all good. The system clock is all good. Everything here is still good. We don't need to change anything. We just need to get rid of the low voltage programming enable. Now we need to make sure that we have our RC0 set up as an output and our RB6 on pin 11 as an input. So we can go to, and you can look at it as either the pin number or the port, however you want. So let's just do RC0 and set that as an output and then port B6 and set that as an input. There we go. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can go to our pin module and we can change the names. So just so this is clear, IO underscore RB6 isn't super clear. So let's just call this input. And then our RC0 will be our LED. Actually, let's just call this button. I think that's the name I use. And then as before, RC0 is not an analog output. So let's get rid of that but we do want to keep it as an output because it is an output and we don't need to worry about the starting high. On the button, we don't care. It's going to be tied uh, to VCC anyway by going over here to the WPU, the weak pull-up, and we want to select that. And then we will need to make sure that we enable the RABPU bit from the register view as well. See, it's nice. It gives you that little warning right there. So let's scooch over a little bit to the right make sure there's nothing else we care about there's the interrupt so we could set it up um, and later we will set it set it up in a later tutorial so that this triggers an interrupt but right now we're not doing that okay so let's switch over to the registers view and look at all these things we can do with the registers in this case we just want to go here to the nrabpu which I talked about more in depth in the previous tutorial, but basically this is just saying that, well, first of all, that N means you invert whatever it is. So this particular bit is active low. Um, of course, it says here disabled or enabled, so you're not dealing in terms of zero or one. It makes it a little bit more clear, but if you did have to manually control this bit, you would put it as zero to enable it versus one. And that's all that N is saying right there. And then the R, A, and the B actually is talking about port A and port B, and then P, U is pull up. So that's basically saying that for all of port A and port B, you are allowing those pull ups to be used. So that's the global place that you can turn on or off all of the uh, pull ups, or uh, you can go as we did on under the easy setup pin module change each pin individually for the weak pull-up. And really, that's all we need to do to get this set up. I just double-checked, everything looks good to go, so let's just hit Generate, and it will create everything that we need to get started. Once it says Info Generation Complete, it is done. I just keep on waiting for it to automatically change the views. It's not going to. So I need to go to Projects, and again, I can verify that my header files have been created and I can look at my source files. So let's open up main.c, and we get all of this just annoying stuff. So I'm going to delete all of the comments because I don't like them. So we are just going to add our application code right in here, and we will be good to go. So now I've inserted the code that Sergey has provided us, and it basically starts out with the main function and that we jump straight into the system initialize and system initialize you can find out what's going on by reviewing the MCC um, MCC generated files so if you're interested in what's going on behind the scenes you can look in there but it's basically just the configuration bits and then we jump into this while loop so while one basically means that forever and ever we are going to be uh, running this we will go and we will basically if nothing happens, that while one will be doing the if button get value equals equals zero. And if it does not equal zero, then it just asks again. And it asks again over and over and over again. And again, remember that when this switch is not depressed, 
it's going to be reading a one. So when you push the button, then it'll read a zero, and then this if statement becomes true. So in line 10, if button get value um, equals zero, then you go into that and you jump directly to a delay. So wh why would you want a delay immediately after seeing the button has been pushed? Well, if you have any experience with switches or microcontrollers or whatever, you can know that you get some spurious noise sometimes and that most transitions are not that clean. That when you push the button instead, in this case of it going from one to zero as a perfect drop off, it usually drops, bounces a couple of times and then levels off. And that's why you have what's called a debounce. And this can be done in hardware with like a capacitor or resistor, or you can do it in software like this, where basically you say, hey, I'm reading a zero, let's wait 20 milliseconds in this case to see if it stays at zero. And if it does, then we know it was intentional, not just some random noise. Or that it went, because these are fast enough, it can say, oh, push the button. Oh, never mind. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, and it'll flicker a whole bunch of times. And so this just cleans up the noise of that switch being pushed and removes that bouncing effect via a debounce. So that is all that is happening with that delay is that in number 10, you check, oh, hey, it's dropped to zero. In line 12, you wait 20 milliseconds. And then in 13, you check again to make sure that the value is still zero. So in line 15, you have a while button get value equals equals zero. And as long as you're holding on to that button, you stay in this infinite while loop and it just sits there checking, checking over and over and over and over again. And not until you release it and you get a one and that no longer becomes true, then you jump out and go to line 16 where you do another delay for 20 milliseconds. And again, that 20 millisecond delay is for a debounce. That's same thing going from one to zero, you're going to have that same problem going from zero to one. So that is all we're doing. And in line 17, it's doing that second check after the 20 millisecond delay to make certain that it's acting the way it's supposed to be doing and also getting rid of any spurious signals that you don't want. And finally, finally, after all of that, when you've released it, you go to line 19, which instead of doing the XOR and all that complicated stuff, you just do LED toggle and it toggles. As you can see in the pin manager that we have named it LED, so that's why it's LED underscore toggle. If we were to name that blinky LED, then it would need to be blinky LED toggle. And the same with button. It says button get value. But if we did something else, you'd have to change that. So if you do decide, hey, you know, LED and button is too boring when you're doing yours, just realize you will need to change the code as well to make those match or else you're going to have some problems. Okay, and that's really it in terms of the software. The only thing I would like to point out is that this is considered a blocking routine. So what that means is it blocks all other code from running on the CPU. It literally does nothing but checks the state of the button or turns the LED on and off. You can't fit anything else in there. And this is incredibly inefficient, but if this is all you need to do, well, it works and it's just fine. And it's a great learning experience. But we will be going over it in a couple of tutorials about how to make it so your microcontroller is checking to see if the button's been pushed while still executing other work instead of just sitting there. Is it, has it been pushed yet? Has it been pushed yet? I don't know. Has it been pushed yet? Nope. Okay. Still here. Very inefficient, but also very, very simple. Um, so that's why we do it. So with that, let's program this thing and see it in action. All right, says it's working. Let's make sure it is. Yep, there it is. I don't know if you can see that, but it is now turning on and off with every button press. So let's get the camera up closer so we can kind of see it and talk about its performance and the way it is working. So with this, you can obviously see that the LED is off and I just push it, turns on, turns off, turns on, turns off. So as I mentioned, it waits until you release to make the transition. So it's off, I push the button, nothing's happening, nothing's happening, nothing's happening, release. Push the button, nothing's happening, nothing's happening, release. So you could set it so that it happened on the forward edge, but we set it up to do the back edge. If you wanna do it the other way, do, do a little experiment. See if you know how to make that change. It should be exciting. And also 20 milliseconds, do we know if that's fast enough? Is that gonna cause it so it's not responsive? I don't think that's the case because I'm going about as fast as I can. I'm not a gamer or anything. Maybe if I got a real person 
I was really quick at that. They'd be able to do it faster. But that seems pretty good. So I think the timing on the debounce delay is spot on, and it is acting exactly as we would expect. Perfect. Okay, so that seems to be about it. I think we've covered everything. Now you know how to both use an output via your GPIO and an input with your v via your GPIO and use a button. So you now, well, the world is your oyster. Hopefully you found it a little bit easier to use the MPLAB code configurator. Again, this is a simple enough project that it probably would be faster just to do it in code, but it's great to see the two different ways to approach it. And again, it seems like the MCC is much more scalable as you get to be, get to have a lot more complex projects. So I am glad that Sergey is doing it this way, where he's doing it both without and then with the MCC. And if you have any questions, again, Sergey goes super detailed with his written tutorial, and he explains all of these things in a lot of detail to be incredibly redundant. Um, but I hope you liked this video. I hope it was helpful. If it was, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, all that good stuff, and we will. Catch you in the next one. Take care.